Welcome. Welcome. I see a lot of people from all sorts of places all over the world. So many from India. It must be a good time frame for that. Um, I'm Diane Smith and I'm here in Hawaii early in the morning. Um, and I just wanted to say a big aloha to you. Uh, I wanted to make sure that everyone had access to the Google Doc that I shared. Um, it's a place where you can put questions and I will provide brief answers and um, links to resources if appropriate. Uh, so if you did not, um, you can type your email address into the chat and uh, I'll send you the link to that because that'll be open for a while so that you can um, see that, keep in touch with that. So um, I wanted to also introduce you to our co-host. Unfortunately, we can't get her microphone to work, but our co-host today, who's gonna be keeping an eye on the chat and answering questions in the chat is Heather Lapper. And um, she's a wonderful colleague, just love her so much. Um, brilliant mind and uh, we have been t together uh, doing a lot of projects with the IB but um, our combined number of years is probably about 36 years with the middle years program so we come with a lot of experience um, we've both been NYP coordinators um, we've both senior reviewers with the building quality curriculum uh, service. Um, we're both site visitors and um, I'm a workshop developer and sometimes leader. Heather is oftentimes a workshop leader um, and both of us work a lot on um, independent projects for the IB, making teacher support materials and we're very, very excited about a set of unit planning videos that are coming out we hope this summer, we're finishing them up. They're gonna be in English, French, and Spanish. And they will go through each section of the unit plan to explain what the expectations are in a very clear and brief. Most of them are under five minutes. <clears throat> so that'll be something to look forward to. That's gonna be published on my IB. So just to let you know that uh, both of us, um, Heather answering in the chat, and, and me here, we are, that is our perspective. On these Zoom calls, you're gonna hear from a lot of your colleagues and there are a lot of different um, ideas out there about MYP and, and a, lot of, a lot of that is because it's a flexible program and a, many things can be school-based, those decisions. But there are some things that are expectations and those things are found in the evaluating MYP unit planners. And if you've submitted your units to building quality curriculum, you might've been surprised by some of the feedback um, that you got because some of it is not all that clear in the guides. So we're gonna try to clear some of that up. It, there is so much to know about the MYP and this session we're gonna just focus on how to complete the MYP unit planner. We are not gonna get into uh, pedagogy. We're not gonna get into thing, subject specific things. Um, just what is required and what is flexible. Yeah, what is a school-based decision? What does uh, uh, the evaluating MYP unit planners, uh, what, what does that look like? What are they looking for? Um, and then what is up to the school? Okay, so like I said, all the pedagogy, strategy, subject specific, that's gonna have to be in a whole nother uh, session if we, if we get to that, if there's an interest. Um, and I'm not an expert in, in all of the questions that I've been seeing that has to do with pedagogy. So <clears throat> we could put that out to the community. Um, and we'll put that, if you list topics, that you are interested in, we'll put that in a so-called parking lot um, where we can um, suggest to Lenny or anyone to, who would like to set up a Zoom session, we'll share that list of topics with them. <clears throat> so again, we have two resources for you and I hope that they're gonna be really valuable for you. The one is that Google Doc that I was telling you about. Um, the Google Doc is one of them, very valuable. You can put in all your questions there. 
The second one is the um, Padlet. That does not have as many resources. It has two annotated unit planners that I created. It also has a set of um, animated videos that I created six years ago for the teachers at my school. Who We had a one class of incoming teachers. That we had a lot of new teachers. So I wanted them to be able to look at those videos and revisit the ideas over and over at the beginning. <clears throat> Keep in mind that um, I no longer have access to that account because I'm not at that school anymore and it was a school account. <clears throat> so that guidance is six years old and it is also, some of it is school-based and um, I will get into some of that a little bit later, but at the time our teachers were having a lot of trouble with the statement of inquiry and it was just turning into a jumbled mess of words, kind of like random combinations of concepts and context words. <clears throat> so we decided to take a little time out and to create a, a framework for writing the statement of inquiry. And uh, that framework is no longer, it used to be acceptable in the NYP six years ago, but now they're going for a synthesized statement where you, um, and we're gonna go into that today, what is, re, what is asked, but just know that if you access those videos, the statements of inquiry uh, format is not applicable anymore. Okay. So I did send out, and thank you so much to the people who responded to the, um, to the survey that I sent out and <clears throat> and put in some questions. There were a lot of repetitive questions um, in terms of people wanting to know the same thing. Um, interestingly, I thought statement of inquiry was gonna be the most uh, popular, <laughs> but it, uh, it wasn't surprisingly, but I, we're still gonna go over it a little bit and you can write questions in the chat. Um, but the other, the other um, areas that were of the most interest were, were differentiation and different sections with questions like, how much detail has to be in this section? Yeah, that is a popular question. I also wanted to note the question, how can I create MYP unit planners easily? <laughs> that is the question of the day. <laughs> um, so my answer to that is, just like the joke about getting into Carnegie Hall, if you've heard that joke, it's practice, practice, practice. Because the more you understand what it will look like in the end, what you're going for, what goes in each section, and you have experience doing it, it does get easier. So there is no shortcut. It's challenging in the beginning. And uh, you're gonna need your friends, your coordinators, your colleagues in your subject group um, to help support you in that. So just very briefly, because it's so important, we are going to look at the statement of inquiry just a bit. So here is an example. I'm going to show four examples. Um, this one is from language acquisition. So the bottom line is that um, there will be, you will have done a whole lot of thinking before you get to the point of even writing anything in your unit planner. You'll think, what is it that I really want to make an impact with, with students related to this content? Some people um, have a required curriculum content, right? So that might be their starting place. So they will need to look at the content and, and for maybe it's prescribed for you, these units, what the content is, but you have to somehow magically change them into MYP unit planners. So what you're gonna need to do is consider the content and come up with, choose one of the key concepts. You can choose one of the three or four that were drawn from your subject group or you can choose any of the 16 key concepts. Or you can, 
identify a, a meaningful big idea, a big key concept that is customized to the needs of your unit. There's flexibility there. The only parameter is that you do need to address and explore the key concepts prescribed for your subject group at least once over the five years of the program. That's not very much at all. So to understand that concept in depth, it's really expected that, that, con that those concepts are explored multiple times at increasing levels of complexity over the five years. But those are just three to four concepts. So other than that, for units, you're not constrained. You can choose any of them. So that should help a bit in making statements of inquiry that actually make sense. Um, the next thing is that you're going to get is the, uh, uh, the related concepts. And we suggest one to two. That's not a requirement, it's a suggestion. And the reason being that your statement of inquiry should be concise and clear and easy to understand. And the length of the unit should allow you to explore each of these concepts explicitly at some depth, right? Each concept and the relationship between them. The thing that we suggest after you've, you've um, identified the key and related concepts is to create a conceptual understanding statement. There's an example of it here. So what that describes, effective communication relies on a perceptive awareness of one's relationship with one's audience. This is particularly, uh, important concept in say a language like Japanese or Mandarin, right? You're going to change your verbs. You're going to change so many things in how you say something depending on the audience. So this could even be, you know, the, it's clear, it's concise, it's meaningful. It has relevance to the subject. And on that note, there has been a lot of misunderstanding out there about the degree of transfer that has to happen with a statement of inquiry. A statement of inquiry does not, regardless of what you've heard in some places, uh, the statement of inquiry does not have to be universally transferable. It does not have to be applicable to every single subject group every unit, every subject. No, because when that happens, the, the, the conceptual idea is so generic that it becomes meaningless to the particular subject. So it can be applicable to more than one subject, maybe your subject and one other subject, or it could be just relevant to many areas of exploration in your subject. It can be transferable within the subject. The requirement is that it's transferable beyond the content of the unit. So there will be no content words in the statement. For instance, you would not have World War I. You would not have um, French cuisine. You wouldn't have... Um, photosynthesis. You wouldn't have unit-specific content in the statement. It should be transferable and the teacher should be able to bring up any conceptual idea that they've presented before in, in other units in the future of that same subject. Yeah? Okay, so once you have the conceptual understanding, which is not a requirement, but we highly, highly encourage it. It makes it so much clearer in your mind and in students' mind to have the conceptual idea 
very, very clear. The next thing that you're going to build in is the conception, I mean, the global context. So you're going to choose a global context that is relevant to the content that you're going to be exploring. So in this particular unit, look at the conceptual idea and they might pick roles and status as their exploration. So what is it that needs to be included in the statement of your inquiry? It's the exploration, not the global context words. So you're going to choose an exploration and you can either choose one of the words, a couple of the words, a phrase um, in MYP from principles into practice in the global context table. You can choose one of those, a combination of those from any, any list that's bullet pointed, or, and this is critical, you can write a customized exploration. Those explorations in MYP from principles into practice are examples. They are not a prescribed list. Okay, so you pick one of those and then you're going to find a way to weave it nicely into the conceptual understanding so that it makes sense. So in this case, the example is effective communication. So it's exactly the same. You can just copy paste your conceptual understanding and then weave in your global context exploration. Effective communication relies on a perceptive awareness of one's role and the relative status of that role in relationship to one's audience. Make sense? Thumbs up? All right, so let's look at another example. Here's one from individuals and societies. So we'll just go through it quickly. Let's say they pick culture and then identity and perspective. And then their exploration is gender, race, beauty, and social norms. They picked some of those from MYP from principles into practice and they customized some of them. Social norms is in there. <clears throat> so the conceptual understanding they created was culture permeates our identity and shapes our perspective. Clearly understandable. It's not a random combination of concepts mushed together. Right? It makes sense. And then they wove in, this is the context through which this big idea is going to be explored. Throughout the unit, they're going to be looking at gender, race, beauty, and what's considered normal or social norms. So culture permeate, permeates our identity and shapes our perspectives regarding gender, race, beauty, and what is considered normal. So separating those two things out can be very, very helpful for students when you're introducing the unit and you're saying, hey, here's the big idea that we're going to look at. Culture permeates our identity and shapes our perspectives. What do you think that means? And so they kind of like pre-think and try to think about what does that idea mean? And then it's, you're going to say that the learning experiences are going to be shaped around trying to really deep down dive into that idea and the the context through which that idea is going to be explored are through topics related to gender race beauty and what's considered normal yep much much more clear i'm not going to get into inquiry questions just yet but at a, at a glance you can see that all of them uh, the color coding really helps. If you have managed back, you can't color code, unfortunately. But if you pre-write it on just a, a Word doc or a Google doc, you can color code throughout your entire unit plan. And then you can see, am I really addressing these ideas <clears throat> throughout the unit? So you can see that all of the factual, conceptual, and debatable questions all guide students 
towards picking apart and exploring the conceptual idea. And in some of them, it relates to the, uh, the global context exploration. So let's look at one more example. PE. So here's the key concept development, the related concept refinement. And this is one of the, um, one of the explorations from identities and relationships identified in principles into practice, person, personal advocacy. Okay, so conceptual understanding, developing a physical skill. So you can see this is transferable within the subject of, uh, of PHE. It might not be transferable to other subjects, that's fine. But it's, uh, it would be applicable in almost every single PHE unit. So it meets the criteria for transferability. Developing a physical skill requires continual refinement of technique. Understandable, concise, clear. Then they're gonna move, they're gonna think about how your own decisions, how your own ability to manage yourself, personal efficacy, how does that help you? How are we gonna use that context to think about that conceptual idea? So the statement of inquiry is developing personal, personal efficacy in a physical skill requires continual refinement of technique. Again, clear, concise, easy to understand. If, if it had language in it that was beyond um, the MYP year level, each of those words could be Explored. You can see in the questions, what does refinement mean? Maybe an MYP student, one student wouldn't know that. So they would think about that. <clears throat> okay, so last one. Art, drama. Say they pick a, a fairly complex key concept, aesthetics. That's a tough one. Um, and then this is going to be an example of how, of the flexibility of swapping out the exact concept word with clearly um, representative words or phrases. So let's just say boundaries didn't fit well in their idea, it came out awkward. So they decided to swap boundaries out with constraints and norms, both of which are forms of boundaries. So in their unit plan, they would identify boundaries and then the words that they are using that are clearly representative. And then they also chose creativity, which is not, oddly enough, a related concept in the arts. It is a key concept, but in this particular unit, this key concept is used <clears throat> to provide disciplinary depth to the key concept aesthetics. So it is re, its, its purpose in the unit now becomes re, so-called related concept. So in the Google Doc, you'll see the reference for this in MYP from Principles to Practice, that in some cases, Key concepts can be used as related concepts if they are adding disciplinary depth as the, as the students explore the key concept. There's a moat yes. So let's look at the There's conceptual understanding. Constraints in the form of aesthetic norms can inspire creativity. Right? It's, it's like when the teacher places boundaries, you can only use... Um, acrylic, or you can only use a certain type of clay, that's a constraint. So I need to use the aesthetic norms of that medium to come up with creative ideas. So this is relevant in almost any arts unit. Um, so it meets the criteria for transferability. Um, and then it's a drama unit. So sorry, I, I talked about 
um, visual arts uh, topics, but it's a drama unit. And they're gonna do um, explorations of cultural fol folklore. So that is a customized exploration within personal and cultural expression because it's how a culture expresses um, their ideas and their um, traditional beliefs through folk folklore. So it fits within the, the meaning and the purpose of the global context, but it's customized to this particular unit. So, uh, and it doesn't mention a particular folk tale or tales, so it's still transferable. So constraints in the form of aesthetic norms can inspire creativity in the telling of cultural fol folklore, very relevant to this unit. Um, and the conceptual idea is, it, it can be talked about again and again over the course of any arts unit. All right. So, um, shoot, because this is, this is, we are 20 minutes in, and so that's about halfway. So I, I, I would ask uh, if we could, um, maybe you can just put it in the chat. Yeah, let me get out of here. I'll stop sharing. And maybe you can just put it in the chat. Here's some choices we have. Uh, we could, just, I have a sample unit planner uh, from arts music, but it's understandable to anyone. And I'm wondering if it would be helpful because there were so many questions about how much detail um, is needed. So it might be good to be able to just run through it and you could see <clears throat> how much <clears throat> detail um, was included in this unit that received sharing level uh, responses from building quality curriculum. Would that be, would that be helpful? Yes, yes. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> okay, so um, I'm going to share, sorry, let me get some water. I'm going to I'll share my screen again and find that unit to, to put up. But here's the, pre, the caveat, the preamble. Um, the amount of detail <clears throat> is primarily a school-based decision. So what we're gonna talk about is building quality curriculum and evaluating MYP unit plans. Yeah? Okay, I'm, I'm looking at the a lesson planner for PYP. Yeah, I don't have any PYP and uh, I don't have the MYP library up. So I, I'm, gonna share, I'm gonna share the unit plan that, that I have and, uh, and we'll just go through some of the major points. And then um, at the end of this, in about 20, 25 minutes, um, we can decide whether we want to uh, continue on in a future Zoom or if that's good enough. Okay, so here's the sharing. Oh, wait. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Okay, so let me just show you this while I have it right up here. Uh, this is the Google Doc, in case some of you have not seen it. So the format of this is for every unit plan section, there's a column for writing a question, and then uh, a column for pr providing a brief answer. I didn't get too many votes <laughs> for the, is this a burning question for you? But um, you can access this Google Doc and find so many answers to um, the questions that people posed in the uh, poll that I sent via email to some of you, um, if I had your email address, um, and, and some other questions that commonly come up. So be sure to access that Google Doc. And here's the, oopsie, here's the uh, Padlet. Yeah, and it has the videos over here. And then, oops. 
Here is the copy of the of the unit plan. Okay, so we'll just go through it. So in this world music drumming unit, um, this was from um, a school in Brazil. Uh, I went and did an in-service there and they sent a few unit planners uh, that I then rewrote or tweaked so that it would meet the sharing levels of uh, BQC. So it was a great in-service. What we did is we took the old unit plan and the new one side by side, and then everyone compared each section and had a discussion about why does this meet the criteria of evaluating MYP unit plans and what, what is in it that makes it be able to meet those criteria. So <clears throat> the key concept is aesthetic. The related concept are play, composition, and structure, and the global context community connections. So the conceptual understanding was a playful aesthetic combined with sensory awareness. And you can see that they got that um, from the definitions that's provided for aesthetics in the guide. Yep, so they replaced it. It's one of those um, clearly representative words or phrases that can be used to replace or augment, yeah, the concepts. Can enliven structured compositions. So looks like they're going to be looking at drumming compositions and they're gonna to try to get more life into them, make them lively and combined with awareness of those around them and who's playing what. That, I can just guess what is this unit about just by looking at the conceptual understanding. So they also wanted to look at a cultural component, um, but related to identities and relationships, community connections. So how does playing drums together, how does doing some musical thing together foster community connections? So that was gonna be what they were gonna be the context for exploring this conceptual idea, community connections. So then they came up with a set of factual, conceptual, and debatable questions. And again, we're not gonna get into a whole lot of detail about this, but you can see from the color coding that they are all trying to unpack the concepts and the context in order to help students understand and demonstrate their understanding of the statement of inquiry. Then we, list, we look at the objective section and for building quality curriculum, someone had a question about this, what are the objectives? Um, because some schools put objectives that are not MYP objectives that could be included as well, learning objectives, some schools require that. But for building quality curriculum and evaluating MYP unit planners, you only need to put the MYP objectives from the appropriate year level uh, in this section. And in Manage Back, you just click it and it shows up. But if you have a platform where you have to put it in, like a Word document or something else, we always recommend writing them out rather than just listing the numbers and letters. Because you want to keep your mind when you're creating the summative assessment, when you're, when you're making the uh, learning engagements, you're always gonna wanna check back. Am I actually teaching to these objectives? Am I fostering awareness? Am I, you know, you just keep the wordings in mind so you know what the command terms are and what the descriptors say as you're doing that. So then the outline of the summative task. So the summative task should be described in en enough detail that you understand what students do and how that task is gonna be assessed. In some subjects, you have to be very, very specific. Um, and in arts, you always need to express how the process journal is used because the process journal is used multiple times um, with multiple um, criteria 
So that needs to be explained. So you can see that it's not, it's not like a task sheet that has way more detail about the task, but it's very clear. It's very clear. What are these tasks? Somebody from the outside, another teacher wants to see what this unit's about. It's clear. You could understand what are the summative tasks that this unit is going to um, entail. Yeah. Okay. Then the relationship between the summative tasks and the statement of inquiries. I got a question of what's the purpose of this? It seems kind of useless. It can seem that way unless you really use it as a thinking tool for yourself. Are these tasks really going to help students understand the statement of inquiry? Or was my statement of inquiry just kind of um, a veneer on the unit? Is it really important? And so having to write it out, how does each task, each summative task, allow students to consider and demonstrate their understanding of the statement of inquiry? That is an exercise for you. Of course, when you're presenting the statement of inquiry, I mean, when you're presenting the um, summative tasks to the students, that's going to come up. You're going to be discussing, well, how is this going to help you demonstrate your understanding of the statement of inquiry? So if you've pre-thought it and written a nice, uh, clear explanation for yourself, you'll be much better able to discuss it with students. All right, approaches to learning. A lot of questions about this. Um, and I'm gonna actually not go into a whole lot of detail because I wrote a lot about this in the Google Doc. But basically what needs to be identified is the category, the cluster, the skill indicator, and then what is the connection of the skill indicator to, and there's three possibilities. One, an objective strand. Two, a learning engagement, a specific learning engagement. Or three, a particular part or aspect of the summative task. Three things you can consider when you're trying to think about what skill and skill indicators are needed. So in workshops, this is the writing frame that's suggested. In order for students to, and then in this particular case, it's one of the learning engagements, part uh, effectively participate in the call and response exercises. Yeah, I have thought about it. I've made, I usually do my ATL skills last actually when I'm writing unit plans because I don't really know what they're gonna need yet. So I wait and then I look and I see, oh, we have this call and response uh, activity. And so I know my students are very squirrely. What are they going to need to uh, learn? What am I gonna need to incorporate in order for them to effectively participate in that activity? Okay. Well, they're gonna to need to interpret and use nonverbal modes of communication. So I'm gonna teach them a specific skill. And I personally think this part, which is not required, but I think it makes the approaches to learning come to life. It makes it practical. It makes it mappable in your ATL um, uh, you know, sequence across the five years of the program. What is the skill? Okay, the skill I'm gonna teach is the use of nonverbal cues. I'm gonna specifically teach about how we make eye contact with the drumming leader. I'm gonna um, teach them some head position cues for volume, maybe nodding my head up to increase the volume of the drumming and tempo changes. And I'm gonna teach them a call to, to start and to finish drumming signals. Yeah, so it's very clear. I know where and when this particular skill is going to be taught. So you can see that this particular teacher chose a lot 
of ATL skills. Something, a rumor I hear out there frequently is only choose one or two. Well, sometimes you're gonna only be able to do one. Maybe it's one of those very complicated research skill indicators. Yeah, very complex. And that's the one you're gonna teach in that unit because it's gonna follow throughout. An INS unit, you're going to just be doing that, those research skills that I identify and that's it. Okay, that's appropriate. However, if the unit is, um, you know, 20, 25 hours, and you're not choosing one of those, um, you know, sort of um, complex ATL skills, like this one, they're gonna teach it, this first one, they're gonna teach it quickly, within 10 minutes of any uh, drumming that they do during the unit. So there, there, there's no need to just do one, you can also consider other things. So here's an example of one for Arts Objective D3. I look at that and I say, in order for students to evaluate the artwork of self and others, that's Objective D3. That's a connection of a skill indicator to an objective. During the peer review of compositions, so it's a specific activity, they are going to need to give and receive meaningful feedback. And I'm gonna teach them a specific skill strategy. This one, here, Think Wonder. Super quick to teach, right? You're gonna model it. Oh, dun, 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 dun. Okay, what I heard was a pattern. And um, I think that it sounded pretty good, but you were, I wonder if it might be stronger if you ended on a stronger final beat, right? How long did that take? 15 seconds to teach that skill. And then the teacher would circulate to see how are they doing in that skill. As the peers are giving each other feedback on their, compos on their drumming compositions, I'm gonna be walking around the room, listening and modeling how to provide that kind of feedback here, think wonder. Yeah? Okay, so again, down, down, down. So doing that for every single one. In this particular school, they have, to, um, they have to identify their learner profile. Not all schools have to, but it's always good to keep that in mind. How is this unit, even if you don't have a place for this in your unit planner, it's always good to make those um, learner profile attributes an integral part of your unit. So pre-thinking about it is gonna be helpful. And in this, in this particular school, they often also have to explain how that trait is gonna be fostered explicitly. So this is just this school. So they pre-thought about it. Okay, we're now on to the action section. So um, again, the, the content section is a school-based decision. How much detail needs to be there? School-based decision. Some schools just say, just identify the standards and that's fine, okay? However, when you turn your unit into building quality curriculum and you look at the, uh, the descriptors in evaluating MYP unit plan, you can see that it would be helpful to provide a little more detail. Like I'm not even a drumming teacher, right? And I could come in here and see, ah, I could almost feel like I could teach this unit because I could just do some research on these drums. I mean, I'm not dissing drumming teachers. That's to say it takes a lot more <laughs> experience than I would have. But what I mean is that this is so clear what is going to be the content. So we suggest when you get feedback from building quality curriculum, you may see this suggestion. It may be helpful to identify your unit content in three categories, factual knowledge, and that's disciplinary, factual um, topics or um, vocabulary, um, things like that, factual 
conceptual knowledge, which is disciplinary conceptual ideas. Okay, I uh, so, sometimes these are um, these are phrases. Sometimes they're um, you'll see in the Google Doc. I have a better explanation than I can think of right now. Um, better wording, um, but what it is is these are those ideas that you often see that you sometimes feel like making the conceptual understandings, but they're too um, content specific. And you still want a place where you're gonna identify those disciplinary conceptual ideas that are so important to the topic. Here's the place for that. You're not gonna uh, disregard those because you have a MYP conceptual idea that's more transferable. You're also gonna list them as content. Okay, and the third category that is suggested just for clarity's sake and organization is procedural knowledge. These are disciplinary processes, skills, things like that. So I'm gonna be listing how to read the notation. I'm gonna say it goes how to control volume, right? These are your procedural skills there. All right, um, learning process. A lot, a lot of questions about this. How much detail? Again, school-based decision. Um, but in submitting your units or looking at evaluating MYP unit planners, you're gonna see that there are a bunch of descriptors that you'll need to show. You're gonna need to show what do students do over the course of the unit and in what order? Sequential. So I would suggest um, well for me, anytime I write a unit plan, it's always my lesson plans. It's the basic outline of my lesson plans. It may not be in as much detail as I might do in my daily planner, but it's going to be my overall idea for my unit. It's and my resources and when I'm going to work in the unit uh, inquiry questions, when I'm going to um, teach the ATL skills. I don't know. Your school may not require that much detail, but for me as a planner, it makes it so much easier. Now, are these in stone? No. The, the unit plan that you would write here is a roadmap. These are my ideas. It's always going to change. Students might have different uh, inquiries. Um, you might have unexpected circumstances. The cl school closes. <laughs> uh, all sorts of things. There's a different assembly that interrupts your class time. So many things might interrupt the plan or change the plan. That's fine. It's fine that it changes. I would just write it out. And sometimes what I do to start that process, unless I already have ideas or an existing uh, lesson plan, I uh, will just copy paste the, the, um, the inquiry questions into this section and build it out from there. So you can see that I started with a provocation, um, I did, I listed what daily ATL skills I might do. Um, I, then I'm going to introduce the unit in a, in an interesting way. And, um, maybe I'll have a diagnostic, uh, at the beginning and then I'm going to start the unit. So I might start again with a inspiring video and then I'm going to start on my inquiry questions. Yeah. And and identify a way that I'm going to explore those questions. So it continues down. And in this particular way of organizing, it's sort of in stages. Yeah, some people do it days or weeks or um, different ways. Anyway, it's fine, whatever your school decides. But the components that need to be in it are, are these inquiry based? Or do you show when the ATL skills are taught? Um, uh, you look at the criteria in evaluating MYP unit planners. Mm -hmm. So there's the amount of detail 
that I would choose for this particular unit, it has the outline. And any drumming teacher could look at this and pretty much build their own unit. Yeah? Okay, so real quick, because we're over now, over time. So just real quick, we'll speed race through the rest. So formative assessment. Um, again, school-based decision, how detailed you put here. But in BQC, we always suggest that you identify what the informal methods are. Yeah, just ongoing. How do you give informal feedback? And then what are those specific formative tasks? What are those tasks that's going to give uh, students specific feedback, particularly in the criteria that they're going to be assessed on in the summative? Um, differentiation, again, school-based decision, how much detail to put here. Uh, and, uh, and now with the new um, learning Heather, what's that called? The sorry, Universal Design for Uni Learning, a UDL. U IB is now going towards a UDL approach, UBD. and that approach is going to find be found in many many parts of your curriculum, in your school classrooms, in your policies, all sorts of things. But you still need to identify how specific student needs are going to be differentiated in terms of support and in terms of extension. Yeah, so in BQC, we sometimes suggest that it may be helpful to divide this section into three sections. Content, which means how, is, how are you providing differentiated access to information, support, and uh, extension. And then process, how are you making different ways for students to make sense of the content. And then how are you providing differentiated ways to uh, provide evidence of their learning in the product, in the summative task. The resources, um, uh, these are the, all of the resources that, are, that the student, that the teacher uses to prepare. It's helpful if this unit, if, this, if the teacher leaves the school and is leaving this unit for a different teacher, um, listing the resources that he or she used to develop the unit or to um, run the unit is good and also the the uh, resources available to students so i'm going to provide um a, um a um, description of each resource and then a link so somebody could pick up this unit and find my resources last thing and then we'll call it a day um reflection again this is going to be a school-based decision how much detail is needed here Main thing, this has to be, that you're not writing this, well, maybe you are, I don't know, in your school, but real, um, authentically, you're not writing this for somebody beside yourself. You're writing it for yourself and for any teachers who may pick up this unit in the future. So it needs to be practical, not just random um, general ideas like, oh, the students love this unit. It's fabulous, right? It's going to be very, very practical. So you're going to maybe describe um, how they're prepared and how that, um, how that helps you think about making the unit, that there's new students, so I might need to raise more funds to get more instruments. I don't know. Um, I'll just scroll down slowly so that in the future you could stop this video. It's being recorded and see the types of things that this particular teacher commented on. Yeah? All right. I think that we need to close out, but I really appreciate you guys being here. I hope it was helpful. And if you want to um, put your email address in the chat, uh, if you want to be express that you would like another Zoom on something specific, or if you would like to be uh, sent a notice that we're going to have another Zoom, hopefully Heather and I, Heather can figure out her microphone and we can both <laughs> be on here. Sorry, I'm talking, talking, talking. Um, <laughs> but uh, just put that in the chat 
and uh, be happy to keep in touch and be sure to keep on accessing that that uh, Google Doc because that's going to be super helpful for you to get specific questions answered and to see what other people have asked. So um, stay safe, everybody. Be well. Uh, we'll get through this. And uh, I hope your unit planning journey is eventually even fun. So, aloha. See you later.